Hello and welcome to my channel. My name is Yeti and I currently live in Ontario, Canada. I moved here a few years ago as a permanent resident. And what I'd like to do on my channel is I share with you the real life issues that immigrants deal with when they move to Canada. And I also talk about the programs and the processes that are available for you to immigrate to Canada. And since I moved here a few years ago, I've had a lot of questions about what the processes are, how much does it cost, what time, I mean like what are the timelines and I would always like answer to my friends and families on what they should do so I just thought I should put this video out there so more people can actually benefit from my experiences of immigrating to Canada and what I want to talk about today is about the programs that are actually available for you to move to Canada what is the minimum requirement that you need to meet before you can move here because I also keep hearing about people getting scammed out of their money and Honestly, it's very sad that there are people out there who would actually con you out of your money Knowing fully well that you are not qualified for the program, but they will collect your money and tell you you are qualified So I will really want to talk about the minimum requirement you need to have before you can move here So let's start from the very beginning why is Canada actually accepting immigrants? Because Canada is not just doing this out of the goodness of their heart that they just want people to come here to Canada and all that it's because they have some needs that they need to fill and those are the needs that is actually driving their immigration program it's not because they just want everybody to come which is why they have minimum requirement that they have set out for people that they want to actually come to their country and when you when you uh, meet this requirement and you're able to pull through in your application what would you get you would actually be given a permanent residency and what this does is you have almost everything that a citizen will have except you won't be able to vote so you would have the social insurance number you would have the child care benefit you would have um, access to loans to to grants uh, student loans and a whole lot of other things like that but you won't be able to vote and that will be the only difference after you've submitted all your uh, application package and your documents it will take you around six months to get it but that was pre-covid so uh, let's start with what are the programs that are available for you to immigrate to canada there are about 12 programs the first one is the express entry program that allows people with certain skills experience education to move to canada and when you come to canada with this particular process you can actually live anywhere in canada in any of the states any of the territories in canada the second one is a provincial nominee program and this one allows you to only immigrate to certain province or territory in Canada. As we go along in this presentation, I'm going to be explaining to you in more detail why you will choose one program or the other. But the first two programs I just mentioned to you are the most popular programs that people actually use in immigrating to Canada. Then also there's the Atlantic Immigration Pilot. You have the Rural Northern Immigration Pilot meaning you're going to be moving to one of the rural areas in Canada. But I don't want you to be daunted by this idea of rural areas because rural areas in Canada doesn't necessarily mean that you're going to be staying in a place where there'll be no basic amenities or infrastructure. You're still going to have the infrastructure. You're going to have the basic amenities that you need to actually live properly. And the fifth one on the list is the refugees. This one also is uh, quite common. Uh, but I don't know a lot about this one. Then you have the family sponsorship. So the family sponsorship is actually for people who are here already as a permanent resident or a citizen. It's there for you to actually bring your, your parents or your relatives from Nigeria to Canada. But there's a whole lot of criteria needed for this as well. So this might not necessarily apply to you if you're not in Canada yet. Then we have the Quebec Selected Skilled Workers. Then we have the caregivers, uh, the startup visa, we have the self-employed, the agri-food pilot, the healthcare worker, permanent resident pathway. And this particular one came into place during this COVID-19 pandemic, which is why I was telling you that whatever I'm telling you today is applicable as of January 2021. So I'm just going to go over the process, then I'll explain to you in more detail. The first one in the process is your minimum requirement that you need to meet. Then you have your eligibility criteria, which is like your selection factor. This score is over 100. At this time, in January 2021, the score is still 67. And the next one is the express entry pool, 
uh, where you have your comprehensive ranking score. This score is about 1,200. That's the maximum you can get. And what they do is they go into the pool to select like the highest score based on certain criteria. So for example, if they go into the pool and they pick 471, everyone above 471 would actually be picked and they'll be invited to apply and submit their documents. And usually when you're invited to submit your documents, you have only 90 days to provide all the documents they've asked you to submit. But that doesn't really mean you're home free. You want to make sure that when you're submitting those documents, everything tallies, you don't make mistake because if you make any mistake, they're actually going to return these documents to you and you would have to start all over again. After all this is done, if they do approve your application and everything goes well, you would be requested to submit your passport. You submit your passport, then they'll put, they'll stamp your passport uh, with a visa. They'll send you a letter also called the Certificate of Permanent Residency. And once they actually stamp your passport, they'll send it back to you. And the next step is, I'll see you in Canada, of course. So regardless of any of the programs you end up doing, you must meet the minimum requirement as set out by the Canadian government for you to actually even consider immigrating to Canada at all. The best way to actually explain this is using the Nigerian school system, for example. If you go ahead to do JAM, before you actually make your WAEC, your NECO, or your GC, you end up wasting that JAM. So basically, take your minimum requirement as the subjects you have in your GC, NECO, or WAEC that you need to pass before you can enter into the university. And take the eligibility criteria as your JAM itself. Because if you if you don't follow the due process and you go one before the other, if you do your jam before doing SSC, you end up wasting the jam. So that's why you need to actually meet the minimum requirement before you go on to the eligibility criteria. So for the minimum requirement, what Canada requests and needs you to have is one, you need to have skilled experience. They need you to have had experience in one job or the other because they are trying to fill their economic needs, right? So they need you to have some sort of experience are you a plumber are you a uh, technician of some sort are you a supervisor at your job are you a manager there's what they actually require for you to have and this experience we are talking about must be in your last 10 years so for example if you've stopped working in the past 10 years uh, for some reason you wouldn't qualify for those programs and i don't want people to waste your time and take your money telling you you qualify when you actually don't so if you haven't worked in the past 10 years, you do not qualify for this program. This program specifies that you need to have worked in the past 10 years. Also, the job you're doing needs to be paid for. If you did not get paid or you were never paid for this job, then you don't qualify. It has to be a paid job that you did for at least one full year continuously. And if it's part-time as well, that's fine. But you need to meet 1,560 hours which will be equivalent of 30 hours of work every week. So I'm going to go to the website for the National Occupation Classification now, which is called No Code. And I'm just going to skim through a little bit so you can see the different jobs that Canada is actually looking for before you can actually qualify for any of the immigration programs. So the National Occupational Classification, or the NOC code as it's popularly referred to, is what the Canadian government would actually use to determine what type of jobs you've done before. It's because as you very well know, you can have two people working at different organizations, doing the same job duties, but they would have different job titles. So when you're looking at your NOC code later and you want to determine where you would fall under, make sure you are focusing on the job description and job duties rather than the job title. Because also, when it's time for you to start collecting your documents and you need to get a document from the office showing the kind of job you've done before, your job duties must actually tally with the job duties in the NOC code, not the job title. So the National Occupational Classification is divided into different skill levels. So if you go into any of these boxes, you will see there's a lot more description into it. So what I want you to do later is Make sure you go and play around with this. I'm going to make sure I put this link in the description box. You want to click on it, find where your job actually falls under. And like I said, don't focus too much on the job title. Make sure you're focusing on the job duties. Something else I also want you to note about the NOC code is this is one of the things that would eventually determine which of the programs you'll be eligible for. Because if your skill level is just C or D, you would not qualify to apply for the Federal Skilled Worker Program. 
you would only be able to apply for the provincial nomination programs or the Atlantic immigration pilot programs or any of the programs. If you have skill level 0, A or B, then you'll be able to apply for the federal skilled worker program or even the provincial nomination program or any of the program as a matter of fact. And in order for the government to be sure that when you get here, you'll be able to contribute to the economy, you'll be able to uh, communicate with people, they also require you to speak either English or French since English and French is their major language in Canada, which they'll call your language ability. You need to be able to communicate. How would you immigrate to Canada? You can't speak English, you can't speak French. So how are you going to communicate with people when you get here? Because always remember that there's an economic need that Canada wants to fill. So if you're not meeting these needs, there's high possibility that they would not actually grant your immigration request. So there are exams that are available to test your knowledge on this um languages so uh there's ielts which is really popular then there's selpip and there's um tef for those that will take french as their language as well but what i want you to note about the test is that it's only valid for two years i don't know why it's only valid for two years because i don't think you will forget speaking english after two years or you forget your french after two years but um as it is as of today that test is only valid for two years so you want to be careful when you are when you so you want to be careful when you're collecting your documents not to do your english language first before doing other things i would advise you do it last uh because it does uh, expire and this process could take really long sometimes and the top minimum requirement that canada needs is for you to have some sort of education you need to have a minimum of your high school diploma or your senior secondary school certificate because you, you're coming here to contribute to their economy. So they want to make sure that you're well educated and you will be able to fill the needs that they actually have uh, on ground that they are looking for immigrants to fill. So at the minimum, you need to have a high school certificate. If you ask me, I would say you need to have at least a BSc, two certificates or a master's actually, because there are marks that are allocated for each thing that you actually have in this minimum requirement so i also want you to note that with the express entry program even though it's been handled by the federal government and all that the provinces can still go into that pool to pick you if you actually meet the requirements that they want maybe they want somebody with a greek experience for example or they want somebody with um, it experience or they need somebody with banking and finance ex experience sometimes they'll go into the pool they'll go into the express entry pool and actually pick people that they need so aside from you doing provincial uh, nomination program you should also do the express entry program and now that i've shared with you why canada is actually doing the immigration process we also talked about uh, the 12 programs that are available for you to immigrate we spoke in detail about the minimum requirements i'm sure now you can determine if you actually qualify for this process or if you don't qualify and make your decision if you want to invest your time and your money in this process don't get scammed by anybody out there so in my next video i've actually explained the eligibility criteria or what is called the selection factor so now you can actually calculate your score yourself and you can determine what program you should go for if you want to go for the federal skilled worker program or the provincial nominee or any of the other programs out there you will be able to determine that yourself when you watch my next video so that's really, that video will be coming up shortly uh, make sure you subscribe to this channel you don't want to miss any information i'm going to be sharing because as you all know this is jack passes in, in, in nigeria so make sure that you are sharing this video to your friends to your family so that they can also watch the video get informed about the process make their decisions and if they finally get approved you can say oh i was the one who shared this video to you and you can be part of their story and if it's okay with you you can send me your email address and i'll forward the document to you uh, but know that i don't go to edit my email list all the time so if you send me your email, it means you're going to be getting notified every time I come up with a video. So thank you so much for watching. I hope that you're going to take that step to start your immigration process now. I believe we're due for another election in Canada in 2023. So you want to make sure you apply as soon as possible because if the government changes, we don't know if the immigration process will also change. So thank you and I'm going to see you in my next video. Bye!